What is going on guys? My name is Chris Howe and today we are talking about the brand new DJI Osmo action camera and how to get the best looking footage, but specifically the most cinematic looking footage. We'll be talking about settings, camera movements, as well as filters. So let's jump into this week's episode. Okay, so for today's video, since we're talking about cinematics, I thought I'd bring my friend Pat. He's right over here. Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Pat. You guys have to see the cinematics that Pat makes. That's why I thought he'd be a great fit for today's video since we're talking about cinematic. Check out these clips right here. Okay, so I think his opinion is pretty valid in terms of camera movements and camera settings. So with our first tip, before we even jump into any of these things, please make sure you update to the latest firmware because they've updated the time-lapse feature as well as the HDR video. So you're gonna get a better image quality just by updating your camera right out of the gate. So let's jump into tip number one. Tip number one, recommended settings. You're gonna wanna shoot in 2.7K at 30 frames. That's where the Rocksteady performs its best. You're also gonna to wanna to shoot in D-Cine-like and that's gonna give you that flat image profile which is great for color grading. Tip number two, adding movement. So one of the best benefits of the DJI Osmo Action is it has this thing called Rock Steady. Essentially, it really stabilizes all the footage. It is super smooth. Like I was running at full force and it kind of looked like I had a gimbal. So because this footage is so smooth, you can add really amazing movement and that's what makes shots look more cinematic. So add push-ins or pull-outs or wrap around. And if you really want to make it even look more cinematic, throw something in the foreground. So put something really close to the lens. So as you saw in that intro sequence that we shot, we had like the concrete really close to the bottom of the shot there. So we'll show you in this example here. And as you can see, that shot looks more cinematic. So add some movement, use that rock steady to your advantage so that it looks like you have a gimbal or a slider. All right guys, tip number three is having cinematic motion blur. This is a technique that professionals use in order to have more aesthetically pleasing footage. In order to achieve this, you'd wanna make your shutter speed double your frame rate. So if you're shooting in 4K at 30 frames, you'd wanna make sure your shutter is one over 60. So let's say you have your camera, you've done double your shutter for your frame rate and you're like, yo, Chris, Pat, my image is super overexposed. So in order to make sure that your image is exposed now, you're gonna to wanna to add sunglasses to your camera. But we don't have sunglasses for cameras. What we have are neutral density filters. So what that actually does is it's stopping the amount of light that's coming into the camera so that you can expose your image properly. The ones that we're using for the DJI Osmo Action are the ones from Polar Pro right here. We have various ND filters from 4, 8, 16, 32. And ultimately what it's doing, for example, let's say it's not that bright out. It's a little bit dimmer in the day. So you wanna add a little bit more light in. So you're gonna pick a lower ND filter like ND4. You're gonna put that on top until it's exposed properly. But let's say it's a bit brighter outside. You're gonna wanna do ND8. And let's say it's really bright outside, ND16. And then let's say it's just, you're in the desert. It's super bright outside, ND32. In order to achieve that motion blur, but also making sure that your image is exposed properly. So ultimately, ND filters from Polar Pro are like sunglasses for your camera. Okay, I thought I'd quickly mention, in order to use the Polar Pro filters and the ND filters and the polarizing filters, you actually have to take off the clear filter that the camera comes with. And for whatever reason, DJI made it super tight. Like, it's so difficult to take off. We were actually worried that we were gonna break this camera. We were like, should we do it? I literally think I'm gonna break this camera if I try too hard. So in order to actually get it off, what we used is one of those rubber grips that you use for like jar lids that are too tight in your kitchen. So I've linked one of them below if you guys wanna pick it up. This way you don't damage your camera and also like hurt your hands because these are quite sharp on the original filter and it like can kind of do a little bit of damage. So to protect both your filters, your camera and yourself, the rubber grip that you would use in your kitchen, links below. But like actually, how hard was it to take off that filter? I almost cut my hands <laughs> trying to do it. I'm not like a weak person, but I had a very hard time trying to get it open. DJ, what's going on? Anyways, yeah. Okay, we're underneath the tree right now because it's starting to rain because that's what happens when you want to shoot a video very quickly and you have to pick the rain day to shoot. Our next tip and what we're gonna be talking about is slow motion. Now, slow motion is not inherently cinematic, but it can help support a cinematic sequence. What's one of the benefits that you're really stoked about this camera, Pat? So 
the rock steady is a great feature but if you were to take the 2.7 K and put it at 60 frames to be able to slow down and have the rock steady allows that extra smooth shot so you might be able to get a bit more distance let's say you don't have a gimbal let's say you don't have a slider but you want to be able to just use your body let's say you actually combine both the rock steady and the slow motion maybe you can get a bit more distance maybe you can get a bit of slightly smoother shot which means that for that sequence it might work better for whatever you're shooting so combine those two things together it's basically in-camera stabilization mixed with the slow motion for like ultra steady footage which can be really great for a cinematic sequence and for the last tip, you're gonna wanna get as much detail in your image as possible. So the reason why we're shooting this tip in front of a body of water is generally when there's a flat reflective surface, it bounces a bunch of light and you get this nasty glare in your image or something that really makes the highlights look worse. So in order to get rid of that and bring more detail back into your image, as well as some color saturation, you're gonna wanna use a polarizer. So Polar Pro also makes these NDPL mixes and the PL stands for Polarizer. So once you figured out your exposure on the ND side, you're gonna start rotating that filter until you get that desired look that you really want. And ultimately it's adding more details, some more color saturation, and making your image look more even throughout. So if you guys wanna pick up some of those, Polar Pro makes NDPLs as well. Battling the elements all day. Either it's super windy or it starts raining randomly through our shots, or like right now, pretty sure there's bugs in here and bugs are gonna be flying into the lenses. One of the things that I forgot to mention earlier when we were talking about the polarizing filters is one of my favorite parts about the way that Polar Pro designed these is that they have this like little mount that screws on in terms of the DJI Osmo. And what it does is that it uses magnets to hold the filters in place. Did you hear that? Just listen, we're gonna do ASMR. Listen to that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So number one, it makes it easier to switch out the filters, but also if you're using the NDPLs, they just rotate really nicely until you get your desired effect. So yeah, Polar Pro, great job in designing those. Okay, so final thoughts on the DJI Osmo action camera. Straight up, I like it. I was this close to pulling the trigger on buying a Hero 7 because we're going on a couple trips right now. I was like, oh, I need a better action cam. I kind of wanted that steady feature that's built in, but with this new Rock Steady that actually outperforms better than the GoPro Hero 7, yeah, it seemed kind of like an obvious choice. So yes, I like this camera. Pat, what do you think? The rock steady is absolutely wild. The fact that you could track me running up the stairs at like full sprint and have virtually no shake, it's basically like using a gimbal. Like, I literally was like this. Like, I wasn't shaking it purposely. I, that's a little over dramatic for this shot. But most importantly, it was like I was running so quickly and the footage still looks good. So that's a huge selling feature. It has like 4K 60 frames. There's a bunch of other things. The filters are easy to put on. I don't know. For me, it's like an obvious camera in terms of like an action camera. So yes, really like it. That's my personal opinion on it. Curious what you guys think below. Um, also, I just wanted to note a big shout out to our sponsor, Polar Pro. Thank you guys for sponsoring this video. Thank you for allowing us to play with this camera, have some fun with it, teach everybody how to get better cinematic footage. I know these guys, these are friends of mine. Polar Pro are all creators. They're just trying to make better filters so that your footage looks better. So whether it's a DSLR, whether it's the new DJI Osmo Action, they basically have filters for almost every single camera, including drones. So if you guys wanna pick up the filters that we talked about, whether it's ND or PLs, links are below. I highly recommend it. You guys can go check it out. So on that note, this is the end of the video, guys. We're gonna go maybe shoot some photos here because the graffiti looks really cool. So if you guys like this video, please press like. It actually makes a difference. Subscribe. Would love for you to join along and hit the bell to be notified for future videos. And maybe you'll catch Pat and I in a future video. Do you guys want to see more of Pat? Don't forget to go check him out. Links are below. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, everybody. I love you. Bye.